certain things that are in the world that we cannot stop. All right? And I'm speaking to the church. I'm not talking to the world. If you're a part of the world, you just get an opportunity to hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking to believers. Are you hearing me? Because I want you to be educated. I want you to know the word of God. Because you know what? For the most part, if you are a believer, you're supposed to be a person that pray. You're supposed to be a person that seek out God's will for your life, your children's life, and everything around you. All right? So we, that means that we should be somewhat in tune with whatever heaven is saying. If you're spending time with God, you should have some level of knowledge and understanding of some things, not all things, that are going on. The word of God tells us that we should pray and watch. We're not just watching things to happen. We're, we're observing. Because there are some things that we can pray that we, through our prayers, can alleviate the effects of some of the things that, that are taking place. Peter was scheduled to be beheaded. The church prayed. He was scheduled to die. But his death was not on God's calendar. They prayed. And in the middle of the night, an angel showed up and got him off death row. So there are things throughout the word of God that I can give you that when the church pray, people pray, that it works on our behalf. It works on our behalf. But there are instructions that has been given from the beginning of time that we need to begin to pay attention to. The death angel was scheduled to come through Egypt. God released a pre-warning that it was the responsibility of every individual to get inside of the house that had the blood upon the doorposts and the lentils. That when the death angel came by, that they would not be subject nor feel the effects of death because they were upon the blood. God gives us instruction throughout the word of God. And it calls us to be protected. I can give you so many stories throughout my life that God has given me instructions to do certain things and be in certain spots to, to literally stop me from being in harm's way. And so we have to have a personal relationship with the Lord. And so when we, when we tell the truth, a lot of people don't like the truth. Only the truth that they identify with. I want you to hear. Only the truth that sounds somewhat good to them. I'm talking about believers. All right? Things are going to get crazy for the world. I will be labeled as a doom and gloom pro prophet or apostle or pastor or whatever. That's, oh, we're not going to go to that church because he's talking about the end of the world. He's talking about all this stuff that's going to happen. All you got to do is read your Bible and it's going to tell you the same thing. All right? It's going to be earthquakes. Oh, he's prophesying about an earthquake. It's going to be earthquakes. The Bible says it's going to be earthquakes. It's going to be diseases. It doesn't matter whether they unleash some uh, uh, bubonic plague uh, and man did it. God never said how it was going to happen. He said it was going to be. You know, Kim Jong Un them have earthquakes happening with nuclear explosion. God never said that it wasn't going to be nuclear explosion that caused the earthquake. God never said that fracking wasn't going to cause an earthquake. But what He did say is going to happen. Are you hearing me? They're going to be floods. They're going to be pests. There's going to be disease. It's going to be crazy things happen. And I believe just like from the beginning of time that man is going to have a direct hand in it. I believe that. So when you hear some of this stuff that men are doing, whether it's the heart situation or our CERN or whatever, I got more knowledge than people give me credit for. I don't preach everything I read. I preach the word of God. I want to tell you this. Don't be alarmed because men are doing it. Just know that things are happening. We didn't even know how uh, the waters uh, in, of the Nile turned blood red in Egypt. It could have been a bush that God allowed to fall in the water and turn all of it red. We, we don't know. All we know is it turned blood red. That's all we know. You say, well, I don't believe that the children of Israel crossed over the Red Sea because it was a piece of dirt that was higher in a higher place in the Red Sea that all they had to do was walk across it. Well, the Lord didn't say that it wasn't a piece of land there in the midst of the Red Sea. All he said is that the wind blew all night and the waters on one side moved on the other side and the waters on this side moved on the other side and they walked through on dry land. And we see all this, 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 this conspiracy stuff that put doubt and unbelief in our hearts concerning God's word because we think it's just supposed to be mysterious.
just supposed to be, you know, just weird, wave a hand and a wand. No. I mean, last time I checked, Noah flood, rain came out of the sky. Last time I checked. And the people that was saved was Noah and his family, and they were in a boat. Right? It was a miraculous situation, but they was in a boat. But there was a prophetic word that came a hundred plus years prior to tell them that rain was coming, that they had never seen rain. All they saw was mist. And so what I'm saying to you today is that we got to come out of this religious box. Things don't work the way we think it works, guys. We have to see things from God's perspective. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm not going to go through all these scriptures, you know, but I just wanted to give you like the prelude uh, into uh, some of this stuff, nations and wars and all this stuff. This stuff's going to happen. It's been happening since the beginning of time. It's just increasing like a woman that's about to give birth. Her labor pains are increasing. And so we see things multiplied in the earth. We're going to see more erratic wave patterns. We're going to see more uh, erratic weather patterns, you know? I had a vision some years ago. I saw that planes couldn't fly. It's because the wind was so tumultuous that they had to ground every plane. I didn't know I was going to be on one of those planes that the 70-mile-hour uh, wind hit and almost took us down. I didn't know that. You know, but it's coming because the nature is in confusion right now. And things are happening. That we need to be very clear that these things are going to happen. We pray for God to have us in the right place at the right time doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be in the right, wrong place. I don't want to be with the wrong people. I want to be with the right people at the right place at the right time doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Amen. The Bible says that when Jesus comes back, you need to be fine doing what you're supposed to be doing. That's what the word of God says. You need to be found. I need to be found doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Amen. So uh, let, let's go down to verse 8 here. It says here in verse 8, it said, all these are the beginning of sorrows. So that whole list of stuff that I just gave, gave you, these are the indicators to the beginning of sorrows. They are the indicators to the beginning of sorrows. Now, the Lord began to move in uh, to something else that was most important to us, even though people don't want to read this, but it's real. It says here in verse 8, in verse uh, in verse 9, in the Amplified, it says, Then they will hand you over to suffer affliction and tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Now, let me tell you something. Some of us are going to die for our faith. I know people don't want to hear that. Some of us, we, we live in an antichrist world. I mean, we, we don't know who it's going to be. Some of us going to die. It's not just going to be limited to the Middle East. It's not just going to be limited to, to, to some foreign country. You know, thank God for what we have here in America, but people are killing people in America because of their faith. We hope that, it's, we, hope that, that we don't have to go through that individually, but some of us will. It's just the reality of life. Things are going to become so intensified in the earth to where people will kill you because of your beliefs. As an anti-Christ spirit that's working in the earth, and we need to be fully aware is that anti-Christ don't mean the embodiment of a man. It's a spirit. Anything that's anti-Christ. Anti. Not for. It's an issue. It's a spirit. You mentioned Jesus and everybody got a problem. You mentioned church, everybody got a problem. But you mentioned Muhammad, you mentioned Buddha, you mentioned whatever, and it's okay. Just like these people that were attacking all the workers there in Houston here a few days ago. They made all these captions about people saying the angels came to help us. And somebody made a, a, one of these uh, bubble cartoon deals and said it's not the angels, it's the U.S. government or whoever, whatever. And it was like mocking. It's like a mocking way. And, and the parallel was made that when somebody mocked Muhammad, they wanted to kill you. When somebody mocked Islam, they wanted to kill you. But people can mock us as believers and say things about us as believers and don't nobody want to say nothing. And ain't nobody saying that right now. And that's the reason a lot of our kids are afraid to stand up for Jesus. And a lot of adults are afraid to stand up for Jesus. I'm going to talk about Jesus wherever I be. All right? And that can be Ebonics to you, whatever. 
going to talk about Jesus wherever. If they can talk about Muhammad and Krishna and, and all this karma stuff, whatever, I can talk about Jesus. You're going to see me praying at restaurants. You're going to see me leading people to the Lord at Walmart. You're going to see me going to the prison cell to lead the killing of Jesus. I've been there too. Hear what I'm saying here. Hear what I'm saying here. Because the real church got to stand up. Are you hearing me? The real church got us. Everybody that's in the building uh, throughout the earth ain't the real church. And everybody ain't the remnant. Are you hearing what God is saying to you right now? We got to stand up and quit being hen packed. We got to stand up and quit being, we call it jelly back. Ain't got no spine. We can't stand up for Jesus. We'll stand up for certain things, but when they talk about Jesus, we won't stand up for Jesus. Stand up for the cause of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, because we, we oh, oh, it's not kosher to talk about Jesus. Well, what is kosher? It's not kosher to, 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 to be preaching about Jesus wherever. Whatever, you talk about the Lord wherever you want to. Talk about the Lord over your dinner. Talk about the Lord at the beach. Wherever you are, talk about Jesus. Amen. And don't let nobody take that away from you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So it says they're going to afflict us, tribulation, and people are going to be put to death, and you will be hated by all nations. Guess what? They hated Jesus. They hated Jesus. So guess what? Don't trip out because people hate you. They hated Jesus. I'm not of this world. They're going to hate you. I mean, it feels very uncomfortable sometimes, man. It feels uncomfortable. But guess what? When you're walking in the power and the assurity of who you are, I can care less what people think sometimes. God is witness. You know, we went in Kirkland's. Yeah, everybody in Kirkland's know me now. Everybody. The one in front, they all know me. Rosita and, 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 and Francisco, they all know me. Because they had an encounter with Jesus. Amen. Because if God give me a window, I'm telling you, if God give me a crack, I'm going to take that crack. Be like Rocket said, you know, one seed, one water, one, you pray, God bring the increase. Yeah. I just want to play my part, Jesus. Yeah. Right. I want to play my part. Yeah. So wherever you go, you need to be a person of impact. Yeah. Are you hearing me in this place? You need to be a person of impact for the glory of God. Yeah. Quit shrinking in your faith if you really believe Jesus. Yeah. I begin to question whether people really believe Jesus because they shrink so much. Let's stop shrinking and be who we are in Christ Jesus. Verse 10 says, and then many will be offended. Oh, we get to the crux of this place now. And many shall be offended and repel and will begin to distrust and desert Jesus, whom they ought to trust and obey, and will stumble and fall away and betray one another and pursue one another with hatred. Let me tell you something here. An offended person is harder to win than a city. Are you hearing me? An offended person. You know, when people are offended, people stumble over them. You become a stumbling block. Whatever's in your heart, you need to let God deal with it. Because you're going to cause somebody to stumble, whether it's your children, whether it's your parents, whether it's your co-workers, your friends, because what you are offended by, you have strong physical emotions about. And when we touch those sensitive spots, we begin to respond out of those spots. We got to get out of the place to where we are offended. Amen. Amen. We come to the church. You know, this is supposed to be a place to where you can heal that. This is supposed to be a place where you're, you're empowered. This is the place to where you are transformed. This is that place. And so the Bible says one of the, one of the things we need to look for in the last day is that the spirit of offense is going to arise. And people are going to get offended. And the Bible says that the reason they're going to get offended is because iniquity is abounding. Meaning that sin is everywhere. Sin is out of control in the earth. Even in God's house. It's out of control. And God got to raise up apostolic leaders to put their foot down and call it for what it's supposed to be. This is a house of prayer. This is a house of holiness. If you in sin, you'll never be comfortable here. You will never be comfortable here. I don't care what level of sin it is. We want to put pressure on you to renounce the ways of evil. We want to put pressure on you to walk upright before God. Get out of sexual sin. Get out of lying. Get out of rebellion. Get out of hatred. Get out of unforgiveness. Whatever you in, we want to call you out of that in Jesus' name. We serve a holy God. He's holy. He's a righteous God. And he has no pleasure in sin. 
He sent the antidote, Jesus Christ, to bring salvation to humanity. And so we can't walk around being offended, walking around ha having our, our feelings on our shoulders. You know, see, he stepped on my toe today, so I'm not going to say anything. Get the toe healed. Get it healed in Jesus' name. You know, they looked at me the wrong way. They're going to look at you the wrong way again. You didn't say that when you were in the club. You paid to get in there, and you stayed. Are you hearing me? We come to the house of God to where we freely come, and we let anything move us away from our faith. We let anything move us away from our stance with the Lord. I mean, so what? I mean, people, oh, whatever I'm doing me right, you live in a house that you haven't moved out yet where everybody treats you bad. You go to sleep there. You live there. Why had you left there? Some of us, we are in abusive relationships with people. And we stay in those abusive relationships talking about it's the will of God. Well, if that's the will of God, what's this? If that's the will of God, coming to God's house, what's this? You know, you get slapped and turn around and say, I love you, by people that don't care nothing about you. And you have a little fender bender and an incident with people in the body of Christ, and you hate them, and you can't even stand to see them. Amen. And they didn't even slap you naturally. <laughs> Somebody trying to choke you out, and you still with them. It's deception. It's a spirit. The enemy want to move you away from God. But he can't move you away without your permission. Our attitudes are jacked up. Our mindsets are jacked up. And we need God to unjack us, man. Stop looking at stuff through human eyes. Attempt to look at it through the eyes of the Spirit. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here right now. Not that he left. He's always been here. Because if he ain't there, I'm not going to be a part of it. I'm just telling you. I'm skedaddling, bro. Hallelujah. So it said they're going to begin to distrust God. So if you distrust something, it means that you break covenant with it and you begin to trust something else. You know what you begin to trust? You begin to trust yourself. And you begin to trust your judgment. And you begin to trust what you think. And you begin to trust what other people think over what God's saying. See, I want to ask you a question. I dare you to ask God what he got to say about your situation and wait on an answer. I dare you to ask him because if you ask God, he's going to give you the truth because he is true. Many of us, we don't even go to God like that because we don't even have like a real relationship with him to go to him and say, God, what do you think about this? Some of us can't even trace in our mind when we went to God and say, God, what do you think about this? I'm talking to the body. How do you feel about this, Lord? You know, and we, we, you know what, if we do ask it, we don't wait to see, we don't wait to get an answer. We go on to do what we want to do. You know, we get married and all kind of stuff. We ain't consider God in nothing, you know. We just did what we want to do. And all of a sudden, you're there, and, and, and uh, all of H-E double hockey sticks is breaking, breaking loose in your life, and uh, you, you, you run into the scripture where the Lord said, consider me in all your ways. And you didn't consider God in that way, you considered your flesh. Because your body was calling, like Mark Kelly said, your body was calling. <laughs> he was telling the truth. That brother needs Jesus, but he was telling the truth. Your body running stuff. It ain't the Lord. It ain't the Spirit of God. It's your body. I'm going to be the preacher to tell you. I'm going to be the one to look you in the eye and tell you what does set the Lord, whether you like it or not. I represent heaven. That's my employer. I'm employed by heaven. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Because when I get out of here, I got to stand before God, not you. Amen. I love you, but I'm just telling you. I know it may sound a little, you know, straightforward. I got to stand before the Lord. And I got to give an account of what I've done, what I said, what I did say. I, the blood not going to be on Pastor Rika's hand. I got enough stuff I got to deal with myself. Moi, me. I'm working out my salvation. I got my six engines there. You know, and my wife, we're working out our situation now. You know, because they run in my life. They're the engines behind the steam, you see. Hallelujah. I went through this situation in this past week, and, and uh, my oldest son, you know, called me uh, a couple nights ago. He said, Dad, he said, I had a dream about you before I found out anything was going on. And he shared the dream, man. That brother's dream was dead on, dead on. 
I said, I had a dream about you too, son. I said, you was having teeth problems and you was getting a tooth pulled. He said, my God, Dad, I have a tooth that's calling me problems that it need to be pulled right now. He said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, well, the Lord was letting me know you was having bad problems, buddy. Let me tell you something. The Lord will not leave you in the dark concerning anything. All you got to do is walk with him. It is not fair to me nor anyone that is commissioned by God to be in the dark concerning things that are most sensitive to your life. You seek out God. He'll let you know. That's the reason we fast. That's the reason we pray. Because we're seeking out the mind and the heart and the will of God. And we're not just passing judgment on a situation out of what we think. Nor what we feel. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says, here, he says and, and, and they will stumble and they'll fall away and then they'll begin to betray one another. And they'll pursue one another with hatred. That's the spirit that's in the earth. Like that young black kid the other day that all the officers was running down, Caucasian officers, Hispanic officers, is because they open up a, a place for everybody to be safe and he starts stealing up in there. And then he wants to start fighting everybody. You had the black people, the Latino people, the Caucasian people, and that why the guys were arresting him. So we tried to open this place up to help everybody, and you want to do this. Right. Don't you know that God sent you help? People, people, some people don't want help. God sent help. Why did I make that illustration? It's because we're in a place right now is that we're trying to help people, and people don't want help. They want what they want. They'll turn on you. They'll betray you. They'll backstab you. They'll put poison in your Kool-Aid, but I still live in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I had to throw that one in there because the Bible gives me a scripture to protect me. I have a protection clause. Hallelujah. Anyway, that's where you need to know the word of God. Amen. Amen. You try to slip me a Mickey, you're going to get minked. I'm just telling you, because I stand on I stand on Mark 16, baby. I stand on it hard in Jesus' name, that no deadly thing shall kill me, no snake, no serpent shall bite. Come on, Jesus. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost up in this. You got to know your Bible, man. Amen. So, so he said people are going to betray one another, and they're going to fall away. They're going to pursue one another with hatred. Is hatred of the Lord? No. Is hatred of the Lord? No. Is hatred of the Lord? No. Is unforgiveness of the Lord? No. None of these are the attributes of the God that we serve. So why you got hatred in your heart then? Toward a brother. Amen. Why you got hatred? Why you got unforgiveness? Says so he talking to me, check your heart. Check your heart. The Bible says in John 3 16, anybody know that? Stone Cold should have taught you something if you're a wrestling fan. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who? Whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If you would have saw me 17 years ago, you would have been frightened. I was sociable. I was functional. I was a college student. But I had some bad stuff up in me. And thank God that I was on the end of it transitioning out because if you would have caught me in the middle of that thing, you really wouldn't have wanted to solve me because I was trapped in a different world. But thank God that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I thank God that I was a recipient of that. Amen. I thank God. Somebody ought to be praising God. I was a recipient. Because some of you had the crack pipe in your hand. Some of you had crystal meth going through you. Some of you had all kind of stuff manifested in you. And Jesus reached into you and set you free. Some of you was in the dope house. Some of you was in the crack house. Some of you was in jail. Some of you was messed up. And the Lord saved you. God set you free. The apostle Paul, who we read a third of the New, the new Covenant, he was a murderer. He was a murderer. He murdered Christians. He persecuted God's people. But there was grace available for him. And God set him free. He had a God encounter without man. No man
men led him to the lawn. Jesus knocked him off his horse and saved his soul. Set him free and gave us some phenomenal teachings right here. So that we can walk in victory. So you be careful when you pull go two gun Sally here. If your name's Sally, God bless you. You be careful when you go long ranger and you start being, being the person that points judgment at people because the word of God tells me that whatever standard we judge by, you will be judged by those same standards. So we need to be careful when we do what we do. Are you hearing me in this place? God is speaking to everybody in this place. Hallelujah. And everybody that's screaming, God is speaking to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Get many amens, but it's all right. It said, and false prophets will rise up and deceive and lead many into error. Are you hearing me? They're going to lead people into error. You know what they're going to be doing? They're going to be in places like this. They're going to have microphones like this. Maybe a little bit better. They're going to be preaching from a book like that. But they're going to have a twist on everything and contorted perception and wrong interpretation and lead God's people into error. Now, let me get the record straight here. I am not a hyper grace sensitive preacher. All right? That's not, and I'm not going to send everybody to hell either. All right? I'm going to be right here in the middle. I'm going to let God make those decisions. Are you hearing me? I believe that grace is available every day of my life. And I pray that that grace never run out. I know that there's a place where a door can close, but guess what? That place is not my business. And that place is not your business. Because we can't play God. There's a place that man cannot touch. And nobody knows the finality and the end result of, of a person's life. Hear what God is saying here. But I know that there's a line that we all got to walk. And we got to be holy and righteous and walk circumspect before God. And when I stumble and fall, there's grace available for me. Because I'm not a sinner. I'm a saint trying to work it out and do the right thing. But there are leaders that are in the earth that are leading people into error. They're leading them into error. You know, we came on attack years ago. We had witches in our church, man. Literally. People that was practicing witchcraft. And the only reason I knew it, God showed me through a dream. And uh, the Lord said, I want you to go to church. I just started past. I want you to go to church. I want you to stand up. And I want you to say, I rebuke the spirit of witchcraft in Jesus' name. Now, I was, this was foreign to me. Nobody never taught me this. I didn't, this is, you know, I never dealt with it like this. And even though I had a good leader at the time that, that raised me up, I never knew it like this. I stood in the pulpit. I said, uh, matter of fact, before, before I went, I had a dream. And in this dream, they were throwing stuff at me. And I was in a bubble, like the movie Bubble Boy. You guys seen Bubble Boy, right? So I was bubble boy, literally. And every time they would throw some, the bubble would lift up higher. And the Lord, the Lord wasn't letting this stuff touch me. And uh, when I stood in the pulpit and I began to come against it, the people that was doing it jumped up and took off running. I said, I rebuked the spirit of witchcraft in Jesus' name. They jumped up and they took off running. And the intercessors ran behind them. It was a scene. It really was. I kept, you know, doing the word of God. It was a little scene, you know. I mean, they went, they prayed them devils out of there. And the Lord said, hey. You got to offer these people deliverance or they got to get out of here. We set up a meeting, offer those people deliverance. They refused to, to be delivered. They had to leave the church. They had to get up out of there. Because the Lord says, suffer a witch not to live. Right. See, see, guys, we got to learn the word of God and use it within context. All right? Hear what God is saying. Why am I going here? Because I need to go here. Because I want to bring God's people out of any form of ignorance that you may be in. Amen. 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 I want to bring you into a place of truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, so, so the deal is here, the deal is here, it says, many false prophets will rise up when? The last day. The last day. And what they're going to do, they're going to deceive God's people. How are people deceived? Through the word of God. He's not going to use something outside of God's word. He's going to take God's word like he did with Eve and mess people mind up. We got coats all over the earth. People saying, Jesus, Jesus, God, God. And Jesus ain't nowhere there, and God ain't nowhere there. And you need to make sure you have a personal relationship with the Lord so the Holy Spirit, not you, the Holy Spirit can reveal to you what's true. Amen. Amen. It says in verse 12, and the love of the great body of people will grow cold. Because of multiplied lawlessness and iniquity. Meaning that in the church, it's not talking to the world. It said in the church, we're going to want to send everybody to hell. Because you ain't got no compassion no more. Nobody's saying that, but it's all right. 
You know, when I first started preaching, you know, I've always been what they, they call me a fine brimstone preacher. You know, I say, boy, that boy right there, you know, we're not going to that church up there because he, he fine and brimstone. He want to send everybody to hell. But, you know, it wasn't that I wanted to send everybody to hell. I just lacked all the understanding that I needed because I was young. But now that I'm a little bit older and I know God a little better and I know the word a little better, I can express what I know. Are you hearing me? All right? Everybody you want to go to hell ain't going to hell. And thank God you didn't go to hell. Are you hearing me? See, if our heart is not right, you wouldn't want to see him like in heaven. Oh, boy, people, people, I'm, I'm the, thorn, the, the thorns, are, are the, the stones are thrown now, but throw them, babies, because guess what? I'm like a trampoline right now. So what you throw going to bounce back directionally. You want to see Hitler in heaven. You know what? If Hitler in heaven, ain't got no problem with Hitler, because he cleaned this stuff deal up with the Lord. You know, and I'm not saying that, that, that he is, but all I'm saying, you don't know what happened to Hitler when he stopped being possessed by the devil, if he did. I don't know. I wasn't there. But what I do know is that God is a God of grace and God can reach down to any depth and God can reach into any height and God can reach any distance and he can save anybody. Because if God can save me, you see some of the glory, you hear some of my story, but the half ain't been told. Yeah, I have some things that I never did and I never will do. But let me tell you, when you begin to weigh out sin, you bet, boy, you better, you can't sweep that little porch clean enough. When you begin to weigh sin. If you got somebody that murdered one person and they murder ten people, guess what? They guilty of murder. Are you hearing me? They guilty of murder. So guess what? When you weigh sin out, you're going to lose because sin is sin. Are you hearing me? Well, if you didn't know, I pray that it's track me. Track me. We live under grace, man. We know that there are judgments under grace. But we live under grace. And we thank God for grace. There's some things that I've encountered in my life that I know was not right. And guess what? I was due for judgment, but God gave me grace. And I guess that's none of you because you ain't got a praise in you. I guess you just, I guess you just, you know, you was like, boy, Adam, you ain't had no sin. You ain't done nothing wrong saved. I ain't talking about unsaved. I'm talking about saved. You ain't cussed nobody. You ain't committed no sexual sin. You ain't done nothing. You, you just straight up. You, you might as well be Jesus. Jesus is without sin. The Bible says be the first without sin. Cast the first stone. Guys, we got to have balance in the word of God. And quit having these judgmental, jacked up attitudes about who God want to say. Amen. 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 My God, we read and teach the information from a murderer. Paul was a murderer. But God cleaned him up. God saved him. God set him free. Amen. Thank God for Christ. The word of God tells me in James chapter 4, he says he will give grace, more grace to the humble. Guess what? I want to be so humble, I need all the grace I can get. I need all the grace I can get. I need some grace in the future. I need some grace for the next person I'm going to talk to. I need some grace for the next place I'm going to go through. Because I don't know what's going to be there when I get there. So I need grace to be there. You be like David making your bed in hell, you're going to need some grace. And you're going to need some mercy. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I need more compassion, Jesus. But see, the deal is, you won't get more compassion. You might go through some stuff and you see how much compassion God gives you. Then you'll start being compassionate. Because some people lack compassion because they lack experiences of when they need compassion and when they need mercy. You know? You don't appreciate missing your meal until you're hungry. You be hungry enough. And they put meals before you, you appreciate those meals. You know? You keep living in this 112 degree web out here. You appreciate that AC, as they say in Africa, alcone. Put some alcone on. You appreciate the AC. See, because you don't know how to appreciate something until you really need it. Are you hearing me? Anybody ever been down on their luck? And I don't believe in luck, but it's just a good saying right now. 
Anybody ever been down on their luck to where the chips was low? Hallelujah. And I don't believe in the chips and I don't believe in the luck. It's just an expression. I'm not a gambling man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So it says that the love of many shall grow cold. Don't let your love grow cold because of sin. Don't let, this is a warning to the church. Don't let your love grow cold because of sin. You know, as a pastor, it, it's, 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 it's easy for me to be in the office and to become intolerable and insensitive to people that won't listen. It's easy to do that. You know, because if you multiply, you multiply people and you get the same person keep doing the same thing over and over again, you be like, man, you know, just, just whatever. You know what? But in the midst of that, you know, the Bible, it was a situation uh, the disciples had, and they had, they had, of course, they said, Jesus, well, you know, how many times I got to forgive people? How many times I got to forgive them? He said, you know, I can forgive them a couple times. The Lord said, I'll tell you what. They said, well, how many times we can get, have to forgive them in one day? Right. Jesus said, well, it's like seven to seven times seven, somewhere longer now. So guess what? You got to forgive them so many times in that day. It's no way that somebody can trust past you that many times in that day. And the Lord said that you got to forgive them. Because if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. So unforgiveness is, the, is one of the sins in the Bible that if you don't forgive, God will impute everything upon you that you have been forgiven for and dump it back on you. So how can you and I be an inheritance of forgiveness and we don't walk in forgiveness? I'm preaching better than anybody saying amen up in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It says, but but he that endure to the end shall be saved. Somebody say he that endure to the end. Well, well, what am I enduring? I'm enduring hardship. I'm enduring this type of stuff. I'm enduring all this difficult stuff. I'm enduring all the persecution. I'm enduring all the sin and all the iniquity. I'm enduring all the hypocrisy that's going on among God's people. All the falsity that we see in the pulpit. All the hypocrisy that we see in the pew. I'm enduring all this stuff. And it is detestable. Just imagine what Jeremiah felt like when he was prophesying to a nation that wouldn't listen to God. Just imagine what Isaiah felt like in Isaiah 6 when God said you're going to speak to a people and they're not going to hear you. I can only imagine what, what Jonah felt like when he went to Nineveh. He said, Lord, they don't want you anyway. You, you causing me all these problems to go preach to a people and they don't want you. The end result, Nineveh was destroyed, but the process of deliverance and the fishing bait never went out because God was pursuing the souls of the Nineveh. Even unto destruction. Even unto destruction. Even unto the very end. Let's not talk about the thief on the cross. The thieves. They both was guilty. And he gave both of them the opportunity. One received. One rejected. Because God is the God of balance. And God will be, he, he will be merciful and he will be gracious to man even unto the end. There are some people that don't believe that. There are some people that go get Old Testament scripture and they try to use Old Testament scripture as leverage. Guess what? This is the new covenant. We take the principles of the old. We embrace the principles of the old. But we are not governed by the law. Right. Are you hearing me? Yes. The Lord said that if any one of us attempt to keep the law, you're going to have to try to keep it all. Are you hearing it? So don't put yourself up under the law. Don't put yourself, guess what? I'm going to mess up in a few minutes. I may say something that's offensive to God. I may do something that's offensive to God. But God, please don't smite me. Have mercy upon me, Jesus. Mercy is every second. Grace is every moment. But the Bible tells us in Romans 6, don't, don't make a mockery of grace. Don't make a mockery of God's forgiveness. It says, should you continue in sin, hoping that grace is going to work out for you? Say, God forbid that. He said, don't take your members and be a servant to the enemy. Be a servant to evil ways. He's talking to church folk, y'all. Are you hearing me? said, in the gospel, verse 14 said, and the gospel, uh, uh, the good news of the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. And then will come the end. What gospel? What I'm telling you right now is the gospel. Forgiveness is the gospel. The blood is the gospel. Watching your heart is the gospel. Watching, watching what you do and how you respond is the 
gospel. We are the living, breathing expression of Christ. The word of God says over in Luke 17, it said, be woe unto those that would cause any one of my little ones to stumble. May a millstone be hung around their neck and may they be tossed into the bottom of the sea. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Don't be a stumbling block. Don't be a stumbling block. Don't enable others' handicaps. Exactly. Help people to walk in the future. I, I don't never, ever want to be somebody crutch in an unrighteous way. Tell my wife, you my accountability partner. My wife, her job is to never uphold me in any unrighteous way. My job is to never uphold her in any unrighteous way. Every infraction from the word of God. If any one of us come into a place of trespass, our job is to call each other to the carpet and help each other to come into a place of repentance and redemption. Right. Amen. Amen meant you got it. Maybe it went over your heads. I don't know. Some of you got it. I hope it landed somewhere up in here. Because we got to start changing. Because sometimes we act, we act, we act spiritually deranged. And we need the Lord to set us free. Somebody said, Lord, set me free. Lord. And for you that can't say God set you free, that means that you need to be free even more. Because right. there are things that I need to be set free from every day. Amen. There are some people I need to be set free from. Yes. Come on. Amen. There are some things in your life you need to be liberated from. Right. You need to break rank with. You need to disconnect from. Second yeah. Peter 3, 9. And I'm almost to a point to, to stop closing. 2 Peter 3 9. In the New Living Test, in the New Living Translation. It said, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise. As some men or some people think. See, don't let your thinking get you in trouble. Are you hearing me? Don't let your thinking get you in trouble. It says that the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise. As some people think. No, he has been patient for your sake. What do you mean? God being patient for my sake? Patience ain't got nothing to do with God in himself. It got everything to do with you and me. Because we need God to be patient with us sometimes. Because we slow around like cold syrup in the midst of summer. We don't want to move. We slow to do things sometimes. But God said that he's slow like you think he's slow. Amen. It says he does not want anyone. Somebody say anyone. Could anybody give me the definition of anyone? Anyone. Just give me every definition. Google all. Google every language. What does anyone mean, y'all? Come on, come on. Don't fake me out. What does anyone mean? Everyone. Entirety. All inclusive. The whole. So the whole of humanity, the Bible says that God, his perfect will here, he does not want anyone to be destroyed. But he wants everybody to repent. Somebody say, teach the word, Pastor Regis. At least you can say that. Teach the word, man of God. At least you can say that. So guess what? Your baby mama that did you wrong, God wants you to forgive her and lead her to the Lord. Your baby daddy that did you wrong, God want to take them and he want to save them. The people that molested you and did you wrong, God want to set them free too. The people that killed your kid in a drunk accident, God want to set them free too. The people that tore up your house and there was an arson and did you wrong, God want to set them free too. The abusive mama, the abusive brother, the abusive cousin, the abusive granddaddy, God want to clean them up and God want to save them too. Woe be unto those that say God don't want people to repent. God is about repentance. God is about forgiveness. God is about grace. God is about mercy. That's who God is. And that's what he's about. You think God sent Jesus Christ to the earth to die for men to go to hell? Do you think God sent his only begotten son for anybody to go to hell? You know, when I got saved on October 7, 2000, hell was an option for me. God gave me an ultimatum. I knew if I didn't give my heart to the Lord that I was going to die that year. I knew, I just knew in my heart that if I did not give God my heart, that I wouldn't have made it. Because I was on the edge. I was looking bad. 
I might have been one of one of those on, on the on the handcuff of, of no redemption. I don't know that. But I had a choice. I had a choice to choose Jesus or die and go to hell. It wasn't a deal to go to heaven. The only deal to go to heaven was to accept Christ. And I cried out and I said, okay, set me free. All that stuff that had me bound left because I, I got free for real. I got free for real. He set me free. Bishop Tudor does a teaching that's really profound. And he talks about the unredeemable creatures. And he talks about the angels are unredeemable creatures. He talks about demons are unredeemable. But when you talk about humanity, humanity is always redeemable. Because the price has been paid for humanity to be set free. Now, if people go to hell, it's because they choose their destiny. Not because God, God ain't sending nobody to hell. You choose to go to hell. Now let me give you more scripture. In context. Somebody say he's going to preach it in context. If you don't believe me, believe me again, baby. Believe me again, baby. Amen. Believe me again in this place. God loves the sinner. You may hate him, but God loves the sinner. If you got a crooked preacher preaching, and he can save on the altar. Guess what? He was crooked up into the place he got set free. But God loves the sinner, baby. I'm an advocate for heaven up in here. And we're not down with no false stuff. We down with nothing but truth up in here, baby. God loves the sinner. He hates the sin. He hates the sin. He hates all of it. He wants us to convert. He proved to us how he loved us. He gave his son, his only son. And I'm a great recipient of that. How can I not be an advocate for that? When I know I didn't deserve, I deserve to die, man. I was guilty as charged. Wasn't no bargaining room there for me. But thank God for his grace. Thank God for his mercy. Oh, we stand in our self-righteousness like you didn't know you was guilty. Man, you were straight up guilty. And if you stand in that self-righteousness, you're going to burn because now you're trying to pay the price for your own sin, which is invalid. There's only one price to be paid for sin. That's the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm preaching the gospel up in here. The blood of Jesus Christ. You ought to share this one on Facebook or somebody book. Start reading the book, studying the book, and become the book. That God don't want nobody to be destroyed, but he wants everybody to repent. Repent means to turn from your wicked ways and walk forward. Repent means to stop, turn, and go the other way. Everybody in my family can testify for me today. I'm talking about my blood family. They can testify that something happened to me. No matter what has happened uh, uh, between me and people in life, every last one of them that knew me can testify and say, you know what? He once was lost, and lost was lost, and we know that some type of way he is found. They can testify that I got saved. I was, I was on my way to hell. If I killed my mama before she died, I was a good person, but bad ways. Bad ways. And God set me free. I tell my, I tell my kids, I tell Reagan and them, I say, the greatest thing that I can give you guys is the salvation I got. I want you to know Jesus. She can tell you, I got out of the car last night saying, Reagan, I want you to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Right? Come on, tell me something. Everybody looking at you, right? Wasn't that true? <laughs> I tell them, I say, hey, you got to get the Holy Ghost. You're going into the devil's den this morning. I'm dropping you off at El Tawanda, the devil's den. Now, everybody over here ain't of the devil, but I'm dropping you off in the pits of hell. I need you to be saved, Reagan. And she is saved. I said, I need you to know Jesus. Said, that ain't going to always be around. Mama, not going to always be around. But if I can get you to know who Jesus is. Are we preaching the gospel up in here? said, I want you to know what conviction is. I want you to know what truth is. I want you to know that you're a holy woman of God and your body blown to God. Don't take what's precious and swander with the hogs. I'm preaching to somebody up in this place now. We need some men and women to stand up and call a spade a spade. Call it for what it is. And you parents here, this is a word for the parents. You keep letting your kids pimp you out. The judgment 
that's released on them is going to come on you because you are the parent and you are alive. And you can take that one to the bank, brother. I'm a parent. Tell everybody, these are the rules of our house. It's the way we roll. There's a level of freedom there, but this is the way we roll. We Christians. We believers. They know we believers. Went to Samuel School the other day, the teacher, I was walking up and she was like, oh, I've been praying for your family. She's like, oh, every time I get here, she starts crying. I said, Ms. Cairo, I said, oh, Sam, I said, Ms. Cairo, I said, I'm praying for you. So you feel the power, we're going to slain you in the kindergarten classroom right here. The power of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about somebody that believes what I'm saying. My kids see me everywhere we go, and they see what I'm saying to you. Don't you see it? Wake up. Come on. Don't you see it? It's not about me. It's about the Jesus in me. Don't let people talk you out of your game. Are you hearing me? Don't let people talk you out of your game. Be who you are. I told you 1230. I'm 13 minutes. I'm in overtime. But I'm going to pull out right now. Luke 19.10. I got other stuff to do today, Jeff. I know. God bless you, brother. <laughs> Amen. I <laughs> love you, Jeff. Luke 19.10. Somebody just read that scripture just right quick. Come on. You got to be fast. You got to be on the run. Man, man you got to be joking me. You got to be kidding me. Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. One interpretation said he came to seek and save those that was lost. Those were lost, and that was lost. That is authority. But we need authority to win the loss. Because if you don't have the authority, you can't win the loss. You'll just be lost, and they'll be lost. So we hit you both ways. We got it both ways right now. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Can I get an amen? amen. Are you getting it? Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let me give you two more scriptures. Because we're burning up and I feel chains breaking all around me, man. They breaking. It's a yoke destroying anointing up in here right now. And the devil came to Tahiti. He can't do nothing. Nothing. The, all of He started trying. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Romans 5, verse 8. See, they'll laugh at me too right there, you know. Romans 5. You know, everybody laughed at Donald Trump, uh, 2 Corinthians. I think about that all the time. That's what it says, 2 Corinthians. I know in the church world we say 2 Corinthians, but ain't no E and D behind it to give it its proper second. And if you don't go to church, you don't know it's second. You just know it's 2 Corinthians. Because that's what they taught you in English class. So Romans number 5, 8. But show, but God showed clear, clearly in the Amplified, proves his grace. He proves his own love for us. That's what it says in the Amplified. By the fact that while we were still sinners, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, died for us. You mean to tell me God the Father decided to send his son when we didn't even deserve it? That was one scripture I knew when I first got saved. I knew that scripture more than any scripture in the Bible. Because it said, even yet while I was still a sinner, the antidote was dispatched to deliver me. So when you know you didn't deserve it, God had already released help into your future. Help into your future. Guys, let's take care of the precious gift that's in you. Don't you know that heaven was emptied out to bring humanity into freedom. Don't you know that if God could empty out, which is God is unlimited, he dumped everything out to save you and me? So guess what? There are some folks right now that's in our future that might not look like what you look like right now. Sound like a song. I can hear Clem Clement in the side of my head right here. That they might not look like what you look like right now, but five years, two years into the future, that person may look like you because of a God encounter. I got cousins I pray for to get saved every day. I got siblings that I'm praying for God to, to have a true God encounter with them. I got people that's in my neighborhood that I pray for in the middle of the night that God would visit the neighborhood. Everywhere around me, I'm believing God for somebody to be saved. Let me, let me just give you a story and I'm through here. Listen.
Listen, listen. I remember I would go to the Chinese restaurant and all they knew how to do was to fulfill their order. That, that was a language barrier between me and them. And, and I, they would pull this book on the book of Mandarin and they would try to, you know, try to get the words. And so one day I asked them, I said, can I borrow your book? I went home and I put together a whole salvation script. I interpreted myself. And I went back to that counter, get ready to order some, and I preached the gospel in their own language through a book that they was trying to use to communicate to me. Because God will do anything to reach a soul. You can be Buddhist. You can be Islamic, you can be full of voodoo, you can be full of witchcraft, but guess what? The grace of God can save you. The blood of Jesus Christ can set you free. I led a warlock to the Lord up in this place almost two years ago and baptized him in the back of this little, little pavilion right here. And he broke the stuff off his arm. He said, I used to belong to the devil. I was a warlock for years, but God sent Regis Richard to Ontario, California to meet me at a gas station and break me out of witchcraft and break me free from sorcery. Someone ought to say amen up in this place. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost that's in this nation, in this city, in this building. Freedom belongs to God. Freedom belongs to God. The deal is we got too many church folk that the love is waxing cold and God want to unchurch you. God want to make you holy. God want to make you righteous. God want to fill you with compassion. Do we have any good Samaritans up in here that you will walk down the road and leave the killer there because you too good to minister to the killer? I pray for people that was facing death in, in, in the prison system. I pray for people that was facing life and 25 to nothing and God turned it around and flipped it for them because God saved them. So God will give anybody a chance Somebody praise God. Joshua Center is a place that loves souls. Because my daddy loves souls. My daddy loves souls. Who is my daddy? God the Father. See, I thought somebody was going to say Jesus. God the Father is my daddy. Jesus Christ is my redeemer. He's my elder brother. He's my El Shaddai. He is my God. But Abba, Abba, Abba Father is who we stand for. And he loves souls. The Bible says he that winning souls is wise. If you ain't winning no souls, you lack wisdom, brother, sister. Let me give you one more scripture. One more. I feel good, da 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 da. He said, "Keep going. I love it. Amen." When the youth start saying, "Keep going," you better watch out. And you might have. To, we, boy, we we gonna go into double overtime. Amen. I love it. The youth say, "Keep going." I'll keep going, brother. I'm gonna read this scripture right here. Matthew twenty five forty one. Can somebody just read that? And I'm gonna close this laptop. Twenty five forty one. That sounds like a prescription. Who, who is it prepared for? Who is it prepared for? So you thought that God created hell for humans. Hell was not created for humans, man. Even though humans choose to go to hell, hell is not created for humans. If you go to hell, you choose to go to hell. If you're in a place to where there's no grace for you, it's because you chose it. Do I believe there's a place that a person can hit and there's no grace? Yes, I do. Because the Bible says so. But you know what? Don't not one man know what that place is. I have scripture after scripture that I can prove to you that God gave people opportunity to get saved and they didn't. He said, seek me while I may be found. There's a time coming where people are going to seek out God and he will not be found. There's a time that people are going to pray, and they're going to pray, and their prayers are going to fall on deaf ears, and God will not respond. The writer in Hebrews talks about those that relay the foundation, and it talks about in Hebrews 10, uh, talks about the unredeemable person or the person that willingly sinned that remains no sacrifice. That place, man don't know where that place is. And if you try to judge it, you're in danger. I wouldn't dare stand up. 
to say, well, that person is unredeemable. You gone? They going to hell. You know how I many people are led to the Lord on their deathbed? KKKs? White supremacists? You think it's a joke? I'm real. I think I might be off the grid up there, but I'm real. I'm telling you the truth. You know, I've had people lay down on their deathbed and look at me and say, I did a lot of bad things. Do you think the Lord will let me in heaven? Say, sure he will. All you got to do is repent. And I've seen those people go from torture into peace. And the Lord said, oh, ye enter into the gate. That's why Jesus came. He's going to get you. If you know how to be saved and born again. I've known some bad white people. Worse than you. They got saved. And some of you listen to me. And you don't realize what all they did. Some of them rape people. Some of them pedophiles. Some of them, they did some bad stuff. I got some friends that used to be a part of Mexican Mafia from birth. Did some bad stuff. And they got saved. And all their sin was washed away. See, when we talk about transformation, we, when we talk about salvation, we need to mention transformation. Because if you say that you know Jesus and you are yet to be transformed, are yet in the posture of transformation, I question whether you know Jesus. Because when we, when we know Jesus, all things become new. You know? Knowing what type of world that we got to look forward with our future, I, I, I couldn't have my kids in a seeker-friendly church. I couldn't. Because it's not going to teach them what the world has come to. It's going to be seeker friendly. And when all H-E double hockey sticks break loose, they're going to panic and they're going to turn to drugs. They're going to turn to the world. They're going to turn all this stuff. It's because nobody didn't train them. Don't you know we're raising up warriors? Don't you know that Daniel, mama, and daddy took the time to teach him and raise him up? Because when he was taken away into Babylon, he had to stand on what he knew versus what somebody else was trying to tell him. He was a kid. He was a child. We might not see the forcing of chipping. But if Jesus had not come and our kids said, they're going to see it. And to live to where you can't buy or sell or partake of what the world is forcing on you, I went, I, who want to be a part of that? To where you put your card in and it doesn't work anymore. They say you can't get any food anymore because your chip don't work. You can't get gas anymore. I seen a friend of ours uh, in Houston their son was somewhere off school and he was trying to get home in the midst of the storm I think it was and he stopped to get gas and all the gas stations none of them had gas I think she said he was able to get 63 cent worth of gas a guy a friend of mine is an architect in Louisiana he called one day and said when all the riots broke out in Berkeley his son was stuck his son was over here from Louisiana in the meeting his son was stuck in traffic and he called him on the phone and said, Dad, I'm in the midst of a riot right here. I can't move. I'm stuck in traffic over here at Ber in Berkeley, California, and I don't know what to do. You better prepare your children. You better prepare your people. You better tell them to call on the name of the Lord and may God give them wisdom in what they need to do in the midst of this world that catastrophes are coming like waves. that my little ones were somewhere and I didn't even hate to think about that. That's the reason we need to walk upright with a heart of compassion because you don't know what you got to do and you don't know who you got to take care of and you don't know who going to have to take care of you. Let us stand. Father God, you're great in all of your ways. Thank you for being gracious to us, Lord. Thank you for being merciful to us, Father. Lord, we ask you, Father, that you would cause our hearts to be sensitive toward the lost, Lord. 
and you would cause our hearts to be sensitive toward those that are struggling in the church, Lord, but, but hadn't made a full commitment, Lord. Lord, we pray by the blood of Jesus that you bring salvation, that you bring deliverance, that you bring freedom through the blood of the Lamb of God. Lord, we give you praise today. We give you worship today, Jesus. By your spirit, show us the way, Lord. Show us the way. Let's give God praise in this place. If you're here in this place, if you're here in this place, I want you to hear this. If Jesus Christ is not the Lord and Savior of your life, I want you to lift your hand and I'll lead you to the Lord. If you are not sure that you're born again and you want to be saved, just lift your hand up. I'll lead you to Jesus. This is not something you can play with because when it's over, it's over. And when that last part be stopped, it doesn't have an age on it. When your life expectancy or life is over, it doesn't have a number of how young or how old you can be. It's over. But one thing I can rest assured, if you make Jesus Christ the personal Lord and Savior of your life, you will never regret it. I want to pray for every person in this place right now. I want you to just lift your hands. I'll pray a general prayer. Father, I thank you today for every person that's here. That you've given us an opportunity to be able to minister to every person here. There's only one road and one way to salvation, and that's through you, Jesus Christ. I pray that you would reveal yourself and show yourself strong and mighty in every life here. That the impact of the kingdom shall manifest in a way that we've never seen and never known. I pray that your name shall be lifted up and you shall be glorified in every life here, Lord. That every person here that's struggling, that you would give them the strength to overcome their struggles. I pray that every spirit of heaviness that has been so heavy on your people is disintegrated and broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you right now, Lord God, that you are doing something phenomenal in the hearts of every person here. That every person here that has heard your word, that they shall be held accountable for the word that they've heard. That they shall renounce the ways of darkness and walk in the ways of light through your strength. May all the days of their life be filled with your peace, your joy, your joy, your love, and who you are. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. If you're here and you're interested in being a part of our leadership here in any form of faith, we got so many needs in this house. We got a lot of ministries, a lot of work for people to do. Meet us at our house at 5 o'clock. We're serious about what we're doing, guys. We're serious, and we'll do it with a handful of faithful few, whatever God give us. But we need people to be committed to the cause of winning the loss and transforming communities at any cost. We're not interested in having big groups. If we get a big group, great. We're interested in eternal impact on your children, your family, your marriage, your community. That's what we're interested in. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. And may the Lord give you rest. Baruch Adonai, blessed be the name of our Lord God Almighty. God bless you all. Have a phenomenal and awesome afternoon. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you want prayer.